In the last episode, we got introduced to the concept of variability in general, and we also learned at a high level what are the different levels or different ways to measure uh, the variability, uh, precisely the absolute way and the relative way. In case you need a refresher, check out my last episode. And we got to know that, uh, that there are three popular measures from an exam standpoint of view to measure variability on the absolute side as well as on the relative side. So that is range, mean deviation, variance and standard deviation. And for each of the counterpart, we have the coefficient of that particular variable like coefficient of the range, coefficient of mean deviation and coefficient of variation. In this episode, let's start with the first part, which is this part. We'll start here and then we'll cover this part. So we'll, let's talk about range in specific and then we'll move on to the other topics. So, so like I said, we are going to talk about this measure as a uh, measure of variability. And there are going to be two parts to that. One is the absolute way to measure range and one is a relative way, which is called as coefficient of range. We'll talk about that. In this episode, we'll primarily focus on what is range and how to calculate the absolute part. And this, this piece will be in the future or the next uh, episode. All right, let's get into this. The simplest example of the range uh, is, we pretty much come into this topic or we talk about range every, every time whenever we show, because that's the most commonly used uh, measure of uh, the criteria in terms of the different options available for shopping any goods or products. For example, let's say you're trying to shop a smartphone on Amazon and you just do a random search on Amazon and let's say you get all these options over here. So this is the price range that you're getting, okay? So if you see the price range, uh, exclude this one. So under 1000 rupees might be, let's say the minimum phone would be say 5000 or uh, 500 to 1000. But let's assume, assume that that's not there. But if you see the all the other things, you pretty much get a range of what are the different options available. The first range is uh, from 1000 rupees to 5000 rupees. The second one is 5k to 10k. And the third one is from 10k to 20k. So pretty pretty much what it tells is, is the range. Whenever you go for a shop and you tell that, hey, I want to buy X, Y, Z and I, this is my range. So whatever products qualify in that range in terms of cost or any other parameter, they'll pretty much show it to you or that that's that's how you'll be focusing on. So the range is as good as that 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 what it is. So it's, it's pretty, pretty straight. You don't have to really break your head on what exactly it is. That's what it is. And the way you measure is very simple. So if you ask what is the range, uh, because we are talking in the context of measuring variability, right? So in case, let's say we have got two shops uh, or we are trying to buy two different uh, smartphones across two different categories, we need to know what is the range. For example, let's say I want to buy a budget phone. Let's say this one, uh, the thousand to five thousand. Let's call this as a budget phone, or uh, or let's say five five k to ten k is the budget phone, and ten k to twenty k is the premium segment. Okay, so you want to know what is the range available in the budget side, and what is the range available in the premium side, right? The simplest way to calculate is just calculate the difference. So what is the range in essence? is the difference between the largest value and the smallest value. So the range of data set is the difference between the largest and the smallest values in the data set. In the, in the case of this Amazon phone example, or let's say even if, it, if you're shopping in two different shops, uh, instead of on Amazon, let's say this is shop A and this is shop B, okay? And you're going for buying a phone. And shop A tells that I have a I, I the range of phones that I have or this shop has is starting from thousand bucks to five thousand bucks. That means the highest value, this is the largest value, and this is the smallest value. And the range will be the largest minus the smallest value, which is four thousand rupees. That means typically that's the range, that's a spray spread that he has in terms of the options that he has available. And uh, in terms of the shop B over here the range starts from 10k to 20k so the spread here is largest minus smallest again here smallest largest value minus smallest value and the options are here 10k so if you see shop a relatively has a lesser price range or options or variability in comparison to shop b that's one way of looking at that and that's what pretty much you can put in any items for example if this was not a price item let's say you are just trying to buy uh, say clothes or say yeah some clothes and you're going to a shop and this is the same thing you have so 
uh, what is what are the number of items of the different variety of clothes shop A has? So it could be four thousand single four thousand different units, or they call it as stop keeping units. Or in the second case, it will be ten k uh, stock keeping units. That we also can compare. That means you can see that the range in shop B is more. There's a wider variety, and hence there is going to be a lot of variability in that. That's what it kind of means. Okay. And so, yeah, the definition is whenever you have been asked to find a range, just uh, arrange it uh, all all of them into the ascending order, and then just calculate the difference between the smallest and uh, uh, the largest and the smallest value. For example, if you see, I borrowed some questions from the question papers. If you see, what is the range and coefficient of range that this will cover later? But what is the range? Find the range for the following data. That's it. It doesn't it doesn't matter what it whether it's a cost or number of units. Or you're eating something doesn't matter so this is the uh, data set they have given what you need to do is either you can arrange it from uh, low to high or descending to ascending order kind of thing in the ascending order and then that way you'll arrange the smallest first and then the biggest first or the biggest uh, the smallest value in the beginning followed by the largest value in the end and you can take the difference or you can simply see uh, what is the largest value here the largest value seems to be 22 and the smallest value seems to be two. So the range is going to be largest minus smallest, the range is going to be 20. But in, in this method, if you just don't uh, arrange it in the order, uh, you might make mistakes, you might miss out something. For example, the three is also looking smaller, so you might miss out on two, and by mistake, you'll take three. So it's always better, for example, if you have how many, how many numbers we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So just make nine spots, three, three and three and quickly arrange the numbers so that you know what's what so we know the lowest is two and the highest is 22 and ensure everything else falls in between this in the ascending order and that way you can take the extreme values on the right side and take the difference of the extreme value the largest value on the right and the smallest value on the left and that will be a range similarly over here uh, if you see the find the range and the coefficient of the range of data the numbers are big here, relatively uh, over here, see, the numbers are big here. So the range is going to be the largest value, which is this one, and the smallest value is 40. So this one, and that's the range is going to be 160. So pretty much that's how you calculate the range, the small, largest minus smallest, and like I said, try to arrange it in the uh, ascending order, okay? And if you want to do additional reading and just want to enjoy what, what you want to know more about this, these are some of the websites that I have referred and it's really good and advanced, so you can do that. But from an exam standpoint of view, you can just focus on what I'm teaching in case you don't have time or you're not interested. Okay, so in the next episode, uh, we'll wrap up this episode. In the next episode, we'll just continue the part two of this video. And here, if you see, I've just given a plain number set, but how do you find the range of the group data and if you want to do a quick refresher on what is group data, just check out my episode where I'm talking about calculating mean as a part of central tendency. In that, I have put a separate episode of what is a group data, and we can talk about that. But nevertheless, I'll still give you a quick refresher on group data in, in the next episode also, but not in detail, and we'll check out that. So there is particular nuance of calculating range in this kind of examples where the data is grouped uh, in a in kind of a range format or the data is grouped by itself. So we'll talk about that. And the last but not the least, just, just out of curiosity, just an extra shot, range is not always the best measure to check the variability, okay? And there is a reason why it is not. Uh, it's simple, but it's not the best. And um, I'll, I'll put a separate video on this one, but again, this is not important from, from an exam standpoint of view, but if you're curious why it is not best or when should we use that? I'll quickly put a small five minute episode on this one, why range is not the best uh, way to measure and hence why do we require the other, other measures of variability which is uh, mean deviation and from mean deviation how we move to other ones. So th there are different uh, instances where we will use range versus this and there are some instances where we can use other measures, uh, either mean deviation also called as MD uh, or uh, standard deviation called as SD or variance, you know. So we'll talk about that in a separate video. But again, uh, from an exam standpoint of view, not really important. So that's a quick wrap up on the first part of uh, a measure of variability that is called as a range. And we have seen the absolute side of range. And in the next episode or one or two episodes, we'll see 
the relative part of that range of uh, coefficient of range and how to calculate that. I'll see you in the next videos.